Hey, hey, everybody, this is Larry. This is day 17 of the Lico Day Challenge. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, join me on Discord. Let me know what you think about this problem. Um, okay, is it only what, what's going on here? Um, okay, what am I doing? Oh, yeah, checking for the extra coins. Nope. Um, okay, so yeah, um, what am I doing? Okay, so it's rectangle. You have two rectangles and you're trying to find the area behind it covered by the two rectangles. There are a couple of formulas that you can use here. We'll see kind of what we want to play with. Um, it only goes up to 10 to the fourth though. I think we can probably generalize. I mean, it's just the area of the two triangle, uh, triangles, rectangles, and then the intersection, right? The, the tricky part, of course, is going to be figuring out um, how to do the the intersection. And of course, it's not that hard per se in terms of of understanding, right? I don't think there's some high level algorithm <laughs> algorithms here. Um, or, you know, it's just basic things that you probably learn in fifth grade or something like this. I don't even remember when they teach that stuff. The 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 tricky part, of course, in um you know, as a programmer is making sure you get all the base cases. And that of course is gonna be a little bit tricky. So okay. So let, let's uh I mean let's let's jump right into it, right? Um I I think it's just about being careful and stuff like that. Um yeah, let's just jump right into it and do the intersection part, right? The other two part is pretty straightforward. So uh, let's see. So intersection, how, how do you want to think about it, right? So, okay. I mean, this is just two-dimensional. Uh, yeah, it's a two, well, obviously it's two-dimensional. But how do you, the way that I think about these to begin with, um, no, and I, as you see here, like not, like if I was more practice on these type of problems, you know, maybe it's something that I, Kind of memorize how to do but as i'm here right now and so i keep hitting the mic so i don't know if that was making a sound um, but as you can see here i am just trying to figure out from first principles both for myself just because you know that's what i'm doing um and also for you at home because i'm trying to articulate it in a way that is at least reasonably understandable right um, because i can just be like oh let me yolo this thing and then see what happens but okay but the first thing that i would try from first principles is to kind of make the problem a little bit easier right and what i mean by that is instead of using two dimensions i will i would think about using just one dimension right meaning the classic thing of okay now you have two lines um on the on the 1d number line um what is the intersection right and that you know and that um and that we can do. So let, let's think about it, right? So let's just say we have intersection X is you go to, um, what does that look like again? So you, ha um, I'm just thinking, so to, to be honest, what I'm doing right now is thinking through all the cases in my head, just to make sure what I'm going to say is correct. Um, so I'm just doing a proof a little bit. Um, Base, assuming that, um, let me double check the constraints. Okay, yeah, I just want to make sure that they're, you know, otherwise you have to do a swap, which is not a big deal, but it's a case that you have to handle. In that case, I think you just take the max of AX2, A, Y1, right? And then you subtract it from the min of, oh, whoops, not. Why would I have X? Um, Oh, wait, no. Wait, what? Um, so the first line goes from AX1 to AX2, and then the second line is BX, right? So, okay. So someone like this, right? Um, so then the min of... So I'm thinking about... Let me just draw it out a little bit. I'm, so you have A... And this is just x, so you have x1 and x2, right? And then you have b, let's just say it's here. And then you also have x1, x2, right? So then here, what I'm saying is that, uh, maybe I got this wrong, but what I want to say anyway, is that, um, what do I want to say in this case, right? So 
So, okay. So, mm, so they intersect if x1 is between whatever and yeah. Is that the only way? Let me. So I, I want to say that if x1 is between, or one of the x1 is between one of the two. So is it just max of ax1, ax2, or a, dx1, sorry. And then min of a, uh, yeah, ax2, bx2. Is that right? Is that always right? Um, hmm. let's play around this way right? and then of course y would just be the same thing um my my visual visualization today is very bad so yeah so then of course then now you just it becomes easy if this is correct right um and and really the only four cases right there's this and then the other one so we just have to prove that this is correct for the all, all of them by maybe just enumeration and then the other case is, you know, something like, oh, maybe another way of just doing this is just that this is B and this is A, right? Um, is this still true? No, mm, oh, well, I don't also get the Y, but um, yeah, this seems like it's still true. And then the other case is, of course, um, well, there, I guess there are more than four cases. Maybe I'm wrong. Uh, now that, uh, depending on how you want to say it. So you have this where you know, and then of course the swap version. So maybe I just won't do the swap version, but okay. In this case, mm, yeah, that is still true. And I assume that it's going to be true for the, the B as well, because we don't have it. We have symmetry here, so that's good. Um, yeah, and then the other other cases, if they don't intersect, right? I think that case we have to care for, be a little bit careful, um, yeah. Right? Like if you have something like that and then B is here, then what happens? Well, then what happens is that this element minus this element is going to be negative, right? So we, we should definitely keep track of that. Um, but yeah. <clears throat> mm, okay. So let's just say intersection is equal to do, 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 right? And maybe if this is less than or greater, or if this is zero, I mean, I guess if it's zero, intersection is zero anyway, so, but uh, then, and then now we just return the area, which is um, AX2 minus AX1. So you, you know, this is just, regular formula. Uh, maybe I could do an area here just to kind of make it slightly easier. And this is, you know, hope I don't have to explain this. Um, I think they usually give it to you in another way because of the points, but I, eh, well, I screwed it up a little bit. It's fine. <laughs> Right, so something like that. And we'll see if it's good. Okay, it's good for these cases, but yeah, you know, that doesn't mean it's good, but it does mean I'm lazy. So I'm gonna submit and see if I get missed an edge case. Oh, it looks good, cool. Uh, with ASCII art and everything. Um, yeah. So I think the takeaway here, it, it, um, and this is all of one, we, we do like five operations or whatever, um, something like that. Uh, yeah, the takeaway is, you know, um, see if you can, you know, the, the key part for me is always going to be the visualization. And once you understand how to build things from components, then it becomes easier to kind of like, okay, you know, I have to solve A and then B and then C versus like this big problem with many, and, and just try to figure out interactions, even though the interactions are sometimes needed and hard. Um, that, that's for harder problems. But for problems like this, yeah, if you're able to just boil it down to its components, I think it's probably fine. I think the the thing that I, um, yeah, and this one I think is pretty okay to kind of just prove by yourself um, as I kind of did, right? Like I kind of, like I, I think some of, I'm not gonna lie, some of it is that like I have some experience of the 1D version, 
you know, just from doing a lot of poems. So I have some like subconscious memory there. I'm not going to lie about that. Um, so, Cause I feel like that's right. Um, before I even test it, to be honest. Um, and that just comes from experience. I not going to, you know, lie about that per se. Um, but still like me having my gut saying that this is probably right. And, and actually proving it. Well, sometimes the proof is just as easy as going through all the cases. Um, so, so I'm happy about that. Um, yeah. Um, cool. That's all I have for this one. Let me know what you think. I'm not going to do an extra prompt today because I'm a little bit late to the gym and trying to sleep early or some, something like that. So let me know how it goes. Um, stay good, stay healthy to good mental health. I'll see y'all later and take care. Bye-bye.